Hello friends, welcome to C Sharp Intermediate to Advanced tutorial. Now you are watching the final part of the video, message filters. So this is how we developed this sample application. So what you are seeing is from our previous parts of the video. Now we will proceed with event filters. So if you see here we handle our radio button events. So this is our first radio button, RAD error, checked changed, that's the event we are handling here. And for second radio bottle also, we are handling the same event. Um, here we are directly setting the level as error. So when the radio button is changed, we are setting it as error. Here, when the radio button is say, changing, we are setting it as information. Say, for example, we have uh, two radio button. One is uh, error, and uh, another one is uh, information. So, unlike a checkbox, here user can keep the uh, radio button in a checked state only one at a time. See, for example, if a user is pressing a check mark here, and next time if they select this information, automatically the check mark will get removed here. So, what happens for the information? We will get a trace switch level as a source level dot information. So, here it will be overwritten. So, the check mark will first go away from here from checked to unchecked state. So the check state is changing here, right? The order will be, uncheck will be receiving the first one, uh, 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 receiving the event first. So first uh, it will get unchecked, then this will get checked. So uh, the event handler will call in this order. So if uh, I am placing a check mark here and I am removing it here, Let's assume previously error is in checked state and now I am changing the check state to information. So what happens? This event handler will get called the first check state changed. The state changes from unchecked to checked. Here it will be from, sorry, the state changes from checked to unchecked. And here it is from unchecked to checked state. So what happens? Here we are not checking whether it is checked or unchecked. We are directly assigning the uh, source level as error. So what happens? First uh, source level is set as error. Then it is overwritten by the source level as information. Finally, we will have source level, I mean a trace switch dot level as uh, source level information. All right, using this checkbox, we set the level, filtering level. So that's the important step you have to note other stuffs are logical uh, here source level dot error that's what we are uh, using the enumeration constant and here in this case if we are using the enumeration as source level dot information so as already explained in the basics error will be somewhat above the information 
So if we set source level as information, the message will include error as well. But if we set the source level as error, info message will not be pushed. All right, so we just saw how we set the level. This piece of code we already used in the form load itself. And in the form load, we specified source levels dot all. All, okay. Now, so this is the button click handler and in button click handler these are all the existing code we will just add a else portion and instead of using trace information if you see we are using a trace event so that's the method we are using for trace event method we specify event type as error so this is how programmer will code when they code and uh, they may specify event type as uh, error information critical warning all those stuff so that's how they specify their uh, message so here since uh, we are checking whether number is valid right so if invalid number is given we are treating that as a error this is just a message id so useful when you are uh, tracing uh, um, a big number of uh, uh, messages to the event logger this message id will come handy so we can say that this is our uh, error id or information id whatever you call you can call it so the id uniquely identifies a specific uh, message type so if you are handling with your large scale application then you can define these message ids say for example message id 101 means these are all related to file related one so error or information or whatever it is so 201 means database related uh, error information or warning whatever it is so likewise you can define a message id and you can pass that here so this is just for understanding purpose here what you have to know is this is just a message id in a large game scale application this will come handy so first we define the message type then message id after that we specify the actual message string so here we specified invalid number specified all right so whether user sets information or error message this message always get reached to the listener why because it's in the topmost uh, uh, error category but uh, when we say to source level as error information message won't go to the listener we will see that through a demo also one more stuff what we have to note here is application trace source so previously we called a method trace information to log the messages for each prime number found this is the message or function we are using at t source i mean trace source now if you see here we use one more method so you can use any method here this is just a trace event method and using this first constant you can even place information trace event type dot information so this way both function will be equal right so trace information means it will directly send the information messages but if you are using trace event you have to specify that using the trace event type dot information all right so that's all. Now we will go to the demo and see how these filters are working. So here is our uh, sample. So first uh, we will handle this error. Let me go to property and choose event. Checked changed. So 
So here we are setting our trace switch level as error once you place that uh, radio button option. And by default at farm load, if you see, we already used that and during the farm load we are not filtering anything. But here we filter all the messages except error and critical. Now let's handle the second radio button option. So information properties event checked changed. Let me copy this the same. So now instead of error we have to choose information. So here we for the second radio button we put filter as information here we kept the uh, trace switch level as uh, error so error and information then to test this we will go to the click event from here we actually initiate our um, prime sum uh, logical flow here I am just adding the else portions to just to capture this error message so if you see here um, trace source dot trace event trace event type dot error this is just a message id then we specify invalid number specified and trace source um, we are flushing it so now it's time to go ahead and change our previous message also you can even leave it as it is just searching for the prime sum trace message here we are writing it right this portion we can modify so this code the existing code here we are directly passing the trace information right it will still work both are same that's why here we are using the information message and message id i'm giving it as a two instead of invalid number specified we are using the info and we can cut down our previous code all right so now we are done with it let's build this once okay So I'm pressing Control Z to see what code change we made. Okay, we removed this um, declaration as well as assignment. So now we have info. Mm -hmm. now if we build it there is uh, no error the build got uh, succeeded okay now we will go ahead and uh, run the application first we will clear the debug output window and here we will check the information message and i'm turning on both file log and event log here I am giving a 6 as the number and if you see it logged 4 messages you are seeing it here in the output window once I refresh we can see this here as well now let's go ahead and test the error so this time I am typing C here 
and I am clicking a get prime sum. The message is still information if you see, it will capture the error also. So get prime sum I clicked, so it generated the error. Now if I go to the trace log, the previous informations are shown here and it logs this error also. Trace source error, the ID 3 is because of the message ID what we provided here in the message. So if you see here, prime number detected is a message ID 2 and this one is a message ID 3. All right. Let us refresh here also and you can see how the Windows event logger is showing the error with a different icon. And it states that invalid number specified. Event ID, it is specifying it as 3. For information, you will see the ID is 2. So this will be helpful when application is writing um, variety of uh, information. So it, the ID usually specifies some uh, specific uh, programming information like uh, accessing a database, opening a file handle, uh, sending something over the network socket or even it is uh, tied to your program uh, logic also like uh, um, opening a bank account number or saving the uh, account information, withdraw information, saving the bank's personal information. So everything you can associate to your ID and that way when the event logger is filled you can perform lot of operation here. You can search for specific message uh, event ID and you can capture all the information. So you will get at what time these events are logged, all those stuff. So if you are aware of how you can use event viewer, uh, so no further explanation is required here. All right. Now let's go back to our uh, example. This time what I am going to do, I am turning the filter as error. This is not yet checked, right? So I am turning this as error and here I am giving 40. And if you see, and here I am giving 40. And if you see, there is a, no error here why? because we gave a valid number and the filter is uh, to show only the error message. So now if I, before that I will go here and clear it, clear log, clear, now I am clicking on get prime sum and if you see there will be nothing get logged here, why because we set filter as error, not only here even in the uh, trace also, I mean the text trace. So definitely you will see the trace message from our um, previous uh, uh, trace. So if you see here it get stopped at the error itself. So that's from our previous test run. But it doesn't log anything related to this. So we are not seeing 37, 31, all those stuff. So now you may have an idea of how the trace filters works. That's all here in this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.